Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today, we're going to be comparing and contrasting between Saga and Thunk. We're going to see the code and you can see the actual difference and figure out which one is right for you. I will also talk about their differences and how they are similar, just so you can see and pick which one you want. So what I've done is I've created an app, a very simple app in both Thunk and Saga, so you can compare the differences. This is not a code along video, but you can code along if you can follow. I won't be coding along with you, but I'm already written the code so you can just see the differences between the two. So anyways, here we have a very simple looking app, nothing fancy. When you click get users, you're going to get a list of users on this page. We are basically making an API call when you click this get users button. And let's take a look at the code for this application. If we go to our actions file, we have a get users fetch and a get users success. So we only have two actions. Basically get users fetch gets triggered once you click the button and you make the API call and the get user success is what's going to grab the users that we got from the response and we are going to set that into our store and then once we go to our reducer we're going to listen for the get user success action type and we are going to save it into our users all right so let's start off with thunk so we've covered basically the common elements of both thunk and saga but let's look at thunk our thunk setup you go to our index.js ignore this for now because this is a saga code but if we want to set up thunk first we would have to just install redux thunk pretty simple and once we've done that we are going to import thunk from our thunk library and then we're going to combine the reducers even though we only have one i just want to do it anyways because chances are you'll eventually have more than one reducer and then we're going to create our reducer or we're going to create our store from that reducer we're going to apply the middleware for thunk and once we have our store set up we are going to provide it to the provider for our application nothing too fancy next we're going to go to our thunks file and see what it looks like to write the actual thunk code so here all we have is our function get users request and this function will return another function which allows us to dispatch both our actions so first we're going to call get users fetch and this action will allow us to take care of any logic involving maybe you have a is loading boolean that you want to update in the store something along those lines so that's just gets triggered at the beginning of the api call and then we have a fetch call and we are calling a URL for an API that is a free API URL that you can use to test. And it's going to just grab a list of users. And then what we're going to do, we're going to make it so it's in a readable format. And then we're finally going to dispatch get user success so we can save those list of users. Very straightforward. Now, if you go to our app component or app file, what we're going to do is we're going to basically import our get user request from our thunk file. And when we have, we have our button get users, as we've seen before, we're going to dispatch that function. And we have a list of users being displayed. Basically this will grab the list of users and display each user's name in the list. So essentially, when you click this button, we are making an API call that triggers this thunk. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing too complicated. Um, feels like normal JavaScript that you can use. Okay, so now let's look at Sagas. So if you want to install Sagas, you just have to do npm install Redux Saga, similar to thunk. And then you can go to our index file. And as you can see, I've commented out <coughs> our thunk code and instead replaced it with saga code, which is very similar. 
Um, you have Crate Saga middleware, but we also have the store. We're just applying it, and then we have to actually run it. So this is something you can just get from the website. A um, few more steps, but it's very similar. And you just provide the store to the store, and you have our Saga set up. And then if you go to our Saga's file, we have two functions, whereas Thunk only has one. This is a little more complicated to look at. You have these generator functions, which is with this star, so it looks a little overwhelming or intimidating at least. And then you have this yield keyword. Um, you don't have to really understand what generator functions to do, do to understand what sagas actually do. You just have to look at it as when you see this yield keyword, anything that's behind the yield keyword will happen first and the function will basically pause and wait for this to finish before it moves on to the next line and that's how you can think of sagas with generator functions and the yield keyword very simple um, and if you take a look we have a take every these are effects but basically anytime this particular action in this case get users fetch anytime this happens we are going to trigger our function over here. So anytime get users fetch gets uh, dispatched, we are going to invoke our function work as users fetch. And if you take a look here, after this happens, we are going to invoke this function and we are going to call a fetch function that will trigger our URL that we've specified similarly in Thunk over here. And what this will do, this call will basically just invoke an API function. And basically yield will wait for this to return the users before we move on to this next line. And once we have the response, we are going to make it so it's a readable format and then we'll have our list of users. And then we're going to call our action with put, which is another Redux Saga effect. And we are going to put our users into our reducer over here. Now, it's a little weird that we have these effects. Um, there's only a few effects that you just, you will use most of the time. Um, call, put, take every. Take every basically listens for the action call makes an API call for you and then put can trigger another action so these are the main ones you just have to look at once you get over these kind of syntactical barriers saga is actually pretty readable and here instead if you go to app.js the thunks usually you have get user request function to be called but instead we're going to actually call our action get users fetch and we're going to replace what we've had before so anytime this get users button gets called we're going to dispatch get users fetch and that will grab our users instead so you don't have to have a separate function for the entire api call so anytime this gets invoked we are going to go to our sagas this saga will listen for that action and trigger this anytime it gets fired. As you can see with sagas, it's a little more complicated and a little harder to set up and a little bit of a learning curve. Now, if you look at Thunk, it looks very simple, but there you run into some problems with Thunk when it comes to organization and readability. So if you take a look um, in my production app for work i have a situation where i'm making consecutive api calls when you make consecutive api calls in thunk it can be a little trickier it can get a little um, messy with how these things are set up so let's say we are trying to make a second api call over here let's say for example we want to make a second call to a profile, something like that. And with this second API call, we are going to have another situation where we might want to use .den to chain our calls. 
but let's say we have another API call after that. You get into this situation of callback hell with Redux thunk. You have the opportunity of creating functions here, but even with functions, you still have a lot of issues passing parameters or arguments down to the next level. So you have to keep track of all those functions within functions. And that becomes kind of a mess in itself because everything is dependent on the way you write it. You get into this scenario where EPL calls keep getting nested within each other. And that becomes a rough situation to deal with. Sagas, on the other hand, let's just remove all this. Sagas, on the other hand, if you take a look here, let's say we want to make a second API call after the first. We can do that very easily with response to and a profile like this. Oops. Just like this, we're going to have a second URL with this. And if you can see, it's all very logical and very readable as you go through. You have one that goes down and you can make another API call right after that, like this. So you can chain all your API calls. You have access to each of those very easily. And it's very understandable on how this flow works. Basically, it's like an async await. If you know ES7, it's similar to that idea, except we have a yield keyword and these effects. <clears throat> also, Thunks is very bare bone. It looks more like JavaScript typically, but sagas also have these things called effects. Now you might think, oh, this is just another thing I have to learn that they just have built, but there are extra sagas that will allow you to do and get more from API calls. For example, like throttle. Let's say a user is constantly calling. Let's bring up our inspector over here. So a user is just spamming this and you have too many API calls, which is bad for your performance. Um, you can use a built-in, generally you would build your own throttle function, but Redux Saga comes with a lot of these pre-built Saga like this, so you can throttle. And with the throttle, you essentially have, you just need to pass in maybe the time. Let's say 2000 milliseconds. And now what's going to happen is, actually, let's get rid of this first. Now what's going to happen is, refresh it, when we get users, I can spam it, and it's only going to call it every two seconds. And Redux Saga is very awesome because they have a lot of these effects built in, so you don't have to build it yourself. And those things kind of take a lot of time, like, building a throttle function, building, like there's also a debounce, debounce as well, they have, there's a delay one. You can use all of these things to control how your API calls are made. And Saga is beautiful in that regard. With that being said, you can see that I kind of do prefer Sagas in general, <laughs> but you can accomplish the same things with both, with Sagas and Thunks. With Thunks, it's easier to set up, um, easier for people to pick up pretty easily because it's more natural. Sagas, you have a learning curve, but I personally think that learning curve is worth it. It's not too hard once you understand the general flow of it and the things you can do with the effects it will make everything so much easier. Anyways, that's my take on it. Let me know what you think. So like, comment below, or subscribe. And I will see you next time.